The story takes place 20 years after this apocalyptic event happens, right? This cordyceps thing has jumped to humans. Society start breaking down um, as people start losing their mind, attacking each other. This thing is spreading. Population is decimated and all these governmental institutions are falling apart. The military starts coming in, creating these quarantine zones, they're military run, but even those over the years start falling apart as infection makes its way into the borders of that quarantine zone or people will then start rioting as supplies start running low or when their loved ones aren't allowed in because the quarantine zone has hit quota. So 20 years after this thing hits, where are we at? And our story picks up in one of, like the, one of the last remaining quarantine zones that's military run. And it's very oppressive, it's martial law, so any kind of law breaking is severely punished, usually with executions. The whole city is broken up into different chunks, so where you live is different from where you work, is different from where you pick up your supplies, your food. So you constantly have to go through these checkpoints. And checkpoints, you're being scanned for infection. And if you scan positive for infection, you're taken off to the side and euthanized, uh, in other words, executed. And this is where we meet Joel, our protagonist. And here's this guy that um, is in his late 40s. So he's lived in the world that we know. He's from one of the survivors from the old world or our world. And just like anybody else from our world, he's experienced loss, right? Because most of the world has been decimated. And over the past 20 years, here's a guy that's like been becoming darker and maybe darker is not the right word, but pushing these moral boundaries of what he's willing to do to survive. He's the, shutting down. Yeah. He's been shutting down little by little by little to, to get through it day by day. In this and world. he's slowly chipping away at his like consciousness and, and uh, what it means for him to be human. That by the time we meet him, he does have many of these moral lines left to cross. What he when it do in the past, it's almost a daily yeah. occurrence at this point. So when we meet him, here's the guy that's willing to murder and torture people to survive, or if somebody gets in his way. Uh, and what Joel lives in this quarantine zone, he operates in this black market where he deals in contraband. So anything that's, whether it's drugs, whether it's weapons, whether it's extra food, if you're willing to pay for it, if you're willing to trade with this guy, he's the guy to go to to get this stuff. Uh, and he's approached with this job to smuggle this 14 year old girl out of the city. Now why she needs to be smuggled out of the city is something we're not ready to talk about. Um, but he takes on this job. And that's where we meet Ellie. And Ellie's this 14 year old girl where, right, she was born after this apocalyptic event, after the government has collapsed and we've just been left with these quarantine zones. And all she knows is this one quarantine zones, right? There, so when the quarantine zone was set up, they've erected these giant concrete slabs, put barbed wire, and that's what they're doing to keep the infected out. And she's never, walked outside that barrier. And being an orphan, she lives in this boarding school that's run by the military with a bunch of other kids her age, but it's not watched very well, so they constantly sneak out, get into trouble, get into fights. Uh, Ellie's kind of like obsessed with like old comic books and music and CDs, um, and she gets into a lot of trouble that now she needs to get out of here. So Joel takes one, uh, agrees to take on this mission to sneak her out. Uh, it's a big deal, but it ends up kind of blowing up in his face and things go badly during this mission. And he finds himself uh, stuck outside the safety of the quarantine zone, now wanted by the military with this 14 year old girl alone. Uh, and the last thing he did before this event happened is he made a promise to his only friend in this world to, to, that he's gonna look after this girl. So leaving her behind is not an option, no matter how much he doesn't wanna take on this responsibility. Going back in the quarantine zone isn't an option because right. the military will hunt him down. So all he could do now is go forward. There's somebody he knows on the outside and he's hoping if I could get to this person, I could offload this girl and get rid of her. But again, being a Naughty Dog story, things aren't always what they seem. Goals will shift. That's just the beginning of this, what ends up being this big epic adventure for Joel and Ellie. Basically the environment start with the premise of the cordyceps fungus. And if it did spread to man, and this thing did spread worldwide, then the systems are gonna shut down. Everything's gonna collapse. Uh, you're, computer in your pocket right now, your cell phones, right? Your access to the internet, like all of this stuff, street lights, gonna shut down. We were stuck in LA traffic just trying to get to like the restaurant 10 blocks away. It took like an hour. That's gonna be like when shit hits the fan, that's what it's gonna be like. And we start with research, right? So then it's like asking questions. What would happen? How quickly does nature reclaim this stuff? What happens when drain pipes are clogged and water starts collecting and the roof starts caving in? We read this book, uh, The World Without Us, that really describes in detail how buildings collapse, how cities fall apart. When we're not constantly, that's the thing we realize, that the more we read about this stuff, we're constantly pushing nature back to not reclaim the, uh, the cities. Like uh, there's this thing that he talks about in the book. In New York City, they're constantly pumping water out. 
And if electricity ever goes out within two days, the subways are completely flooded. And once again, water comes in, then structural integrity starts collapsing and falling apart. And then nature starts coming in, like you have grass growing, trees coming out, and that was kind of the starting point for us. So similar to the BBC video, which gave us like sort of this what if science jump off point, there's already nature, right? You, you can find abandoned lots right now that are overgrown and beautiful. Detroit, there's huge suburbs, like swaths of this, this metropolis that are being overtaken by, by nature. It's interesting to see this thing, this ruin porn, it's out there where people are going into these abandoned facilities and taking pictures and posting them on Flickr. Well, we start diving into this and seeing you know, what's out there. And this is instantly provocative for the naughty dog mindset, you know, is how can we make it beautiful and intriguing? And it's falling into that the, in the story. What the story wants is also that sense of intrigue and exploration that once nature starts reclaiming areas, then it seems to be in the player's mind, in my mind, it opens up the opportunity to now start exploring and start adventuring into this area. It's that familiar combined with this unfamiliar territory. So it's like right. Now it's you have your everyday, you know, commute that's completely perverted. You know, you have this uh, Starbucks that you'd stop in and it's flooded and the street that used to be, you know, tree-lined and beautiful. After a few years of, of foliage falling and winter cycles, now I have all the detritus like clogging up the drains and that becomes compost and now plants and vegetation is growing out of it and suddenly what was an abandoned street is this beautiful field. Now you have wildlife roaming just in, in the city streets. So you have this like this w combination of what we saw and all this stuff that has this really creepy qualities to it, right, with all people being on and being abandoned, no electricity, and yet this beauty of nature, right, just nature is beautiful with all the trees and all the colors and everything. It's that contrast, right, it's the contrast of the familiar with the unfamiliar. And you get it, it's an understandable world because we understand nature, we understand how this stuff works, and it's exciting as a player to want to go into that world and venture out and see, like, okay, now, now I'm in a, su a flooded subway. Now there's actually a current rushing through here. How do I get through this? And now we, it starts peaking our spatial problem solving. Okay, now we can start thinking as game developers again because this world is opening up not only in lush beauty and inviting exploration, but now it's opportunities for gameplay. You know, what mechanics do I need? What is my interaction with the world, et cetera? So, and we like the fact that it sets us apart. It's post-apocalyptic, but beautiful, you know? Dilapidation and, helps with level design. <laughs> it's true. For us, it's really important for this game to stand on its own, for its story to stand on its own. Um, we could say right now we're, we don't end with a cliffhanger. We don't like when games do that. It has to be all-encompassing. If it does well and players really want more, then at that point we'll discuss it. But even when we're working on Uncharted, the way we do things at Naughty Dog is we never commit to a sequel until we're done with this game. And then we meet as a team and kind of discuss what are our options? What do we want to work on as a team? What do we really get inspired by? Because again, that inspiration is going to have to carry you through this entire grueling process of making a video game. So you better be fully into it. And we're still learning so much about these characters and this world and, and these mechanics and everything that we're setting up that like to jump to, I mean, we got enough troubles just making this game, you know, what we want it to be. Our, you know, there's that whole thing, you shoot for Jupiter, hopefully you hit the moon, like we're going past Jupiter. Like, and so we're good with this one, yeah.